Something we get asked a lot about is the opportunities that blockchain technology presents to how we will live and work in the future. Just to level set on what a blockchain is, think of it being like a traditional ledger, but one which operates as a distributed database that records and tracks entries in a peer-to-peer -peer network. This means that a blockchain removes the need for a central trusted source to capture, store, validate, manage, or share information. How? Well, most public blockchains are also decentralized, so no one single entity owns them or the data on them or stands to profit from selling that data. Blockchains are also immutable, which means once something is written on one, it is exceptionally hard to change that record, which makes such records pretty resilient to fraud. Quite different from the situation today, and all of this is accomplished using cryptography and methods that amount to some really tricky maths, even for computers, which strengthens the whole system and makes it even safer to use. While this maybe sounds a bit matrixy, the reality of this in practical terms could shift how we do so many things. Think of all the things you do in a normal week, for instance. Business as usual tasks like making orders, signing or sending contracts, going to the doctor, scrolling social media, booking a hotel, renewing insurance. Today, these interactions would be currently managed by a series of separate entities, each with their own systems and logins and each storing their own copies of your data. However, blockchain technology would offer a completely revolutionary way forward, particularly when it comes to your digital identity. So let's focus on that for a bit. It's pretty clear that there's a lot happening in the online security world right now. None of us are strangers to the headlines of major scale data breaches and what the implications of that would be in the hands of the wrong people. Yet, it seems that the ticket to entry to even the most innocuous purchase or sign up is our precious digital information. We're often asked to trade agency with convenience, usually with no control over how safely the data is stored or who might end up with it. So the notion of self-sovereign identity, which is sometimes shorthanded to SSI, really upends the traditional approach of identity for a customer. In a nutshell, self-sovereign identity would mean you would create and hold your own identity attributes that are secured by a digital master key of sorts, and you would control exactly how and where your personal information is used. We would be the kings and queens, the sovereigns of the crown jewels, which is our own identity information. And we would choose what, how, when, where, and why our data is shared, and whether a price is warranted for it. This has potential to massively overhaul how the existing identity value exchange occurs. Let me give you an example of a few use cases. You choose how much you share. So if you're buying something that requires you to be over 18, you'd be able to prove that you were without having to actually share your birth date. You'd be able to get a visa to cross borders without needing to send in a photo and fill in pages of forms. You could move between banks without ever having to enter a branch. These are things that have a double-pronged benefit for consumers and businesses. So now imagine how useful this level of permitted personalization would be for you as a seller of your product or service. More privacy, ownership and personalization makes it for better experiences and more meaningful purchasing for the customer. Their online identity stays with them, meaning not only less work for them in building profiles out or form filling, but a more verified experience for the entity engaging with them. For the business, of course, think less time spent on anti-money laundering compliance or on maintaining logins and passwords for your website. Think less time battling with cybersecurity threats and less onboarding work for customers, less payment friction and more efficient and tamper-resistant invoicing and billing. So where is self-sovereign identity really up to in terms of adoption? Well, like so many emerging technologies, widespread adoption is key before there's significant shifts in how we do things today. The thing I think is most interesting for self-sovereign identity in particular though, is that it is something that's showing emergent productivity. A number of organizations are already well advanced in developing global standards and support for this concept, like the W3C, which you might know as the organization that sorts out the standards for this thing we call the internet. Already there are several major finance and tech companies exploring its potential and creating proofs of concept. Take Barclays in the UK. They're working with an SSI provider on a 12-month accelerator. Or have a look at the public and private organisations working in New Zealand on digital identity collaboration. The reality is that there are already so many digital identity expectations placed on small businesses and practices because of the current world right now. Everything from having to update email policies to implementing cookie guidelines to being able to identify fraud and invoicing, it all falls on the business owner. 
When you're expected to become a policy expert in all the things, as well as hold down your day-to-day -day trade, it's a lot of extra work. So blockchain-based solutions like self-sovereign identity do present an interesting set of opportunities to alleviate some of that burden, if implemented widely and properly. And if this part of the system is fixed, it's not a stretch to see how we could all get a much better experience online. I can't wait.